it's time. So um, our next session, our uh, last session. So uh, finally, I'm very happy that uh, can I introduce Andre Fischer as next speaker, last but least, of course. Andre, Andrew is uh, also a sub-champion. He's a sub-press author. And I think he has more than 20 years experience with SAP technology. Please correct me. Uh, and some of you uh, know him as the ABAP, uh, the RUB, uh, develop, RUB generator, the developer of the RUB generator. Um, Andrew, Andrew, are you here? You here? So I cannot see your, your camera. Yes, ah, here. Hi, hi. Hi. So and Andrew will give us some insights, some very important or uh, yeah, great insights about the extending uh, of complex sub Fiori applications. I remember me, I was very happy in, as I saw your the, the title of the session uh, because uh, I have this problem very often in the past. So uh, I'm very happy to see this right now. Um, so I think that's all from my side. Andrew, the stage is yours. Please tell us about uh, the extending of the Fury apps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's start maybe, uh, yeah, first introduction. So now my name is Andre Fischer. I'm working at SAP and there I'm member of the um, product management team for the ABBA platform. So from, let's say old times, I'm still product manager for the SAP Gateway framework. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, and just recently, I again stumbled uh, uh, when talking to Sören and uh, uh, yeah, we stumbled across problems with redefining or data services, large or data services as they are part of SCPS for HANA. And yeah, and, I, and now my plan is to show yeah, what, what, what are the, let's say the results that, um, that I can share. Okay, let me share my screen. That's now wrong, right? Yeah, yeah this is the wrong session. I think it's the YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, but it's also cool to see you in the YouTube channel. Yeah, sure. Okay, stop this. <laughs> I should not do this with two screens. Anyway, it's good to see to see what happens on the on the other side. Now it looks great. Okay. Yeah. So if you. I will use slides, but I will also show some code and examples. But I guess to 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 have the story, it's better to use some slides. So, what is the agenda? So, um, first, I will have a short uh, talk about what reference data source is and what redefinition is, because there might be some uh, some people that uh, that do not actually know what I'm talking about. And then I will explain the basic problem. So what, what kind of problem do we have when do a redefinition of, a, of an data service, which is based on the reference data source model. Then after we have seen what is not working, I would like to show, let's say the workaround. Um, that means it, it's actually writing custom code in the MPC X and DPC X. But since it's a very cumbersome task to do that, I will also show, let's say, some tool support that I have developed. So a report that will generate most of the code for you. And then I will uh, finish with some known issues when it comes to redefine larger data services, because the example will use a very small or data service. So what is actually reference data source approach and uh, yeah, what is redefinition. So sometimes I personally forget that there are other people out there that might not know this and therefore you just say this and maybe not everybody understands this. So the redefinition is something where you create a new project in SCGW and then you right click on the data model node and uh, select 
this menu entry reference data source. And then um, if you later look at the, at the uh, service that has been created, you see uh, a new uh, uh, folder called data source references, which contains exposure via SADL. So this SADL framework is a framework which takes care about all the heavy lifting of reading the data from actually CDS views. And this is, um, um, yeah, this is this, uh, no, the, sorry, no, the, sorry, this uh, reference data source sh should, should be the, the slide title. So I was, okay. When, when it comes to redefinition, you also right click on the data model uh, 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 folder and you choose redefine or data service, and then you can actually select an existing or data service and then create a new project, which is leveraging this or data service. Um, when we look into, um, when we look into um, what, is, uh, what is going behind the scenes and we see, have a look into the, data DPCX, so the data provider extension class, we see that the data provider extension class actually inherits from the extension class uh, uh, of the redefined service. If we look at the model provider class, actually, then we see something different. Here, we are not inheriting from an uh, uh, from the model provider class, but we see this statement like model extend model, that is the model of the source service. Then we set the schema namespace to our namespace. And this actually loads the existing model of an OData service, which is somewhere, some, somewhere in the memory of your ABAP service, but it's no inheritance. So it's, uh, and, and this is uh, uh, something what you have to understand when you are dealing with redefined services. So what is the basic problem? Um, if we are using redefinition of uh, reference data source based on data services, we will see the following. I will shortly demonstrate this. So I'm, here creating an, um, have an uh, redefining an data service that is RDS based. So this ZR source RDS. And I have added additional um, entities here in my service. So I, I would see them in SCGW. However, if I test them my new, my service, I will still see my two entities, which came from the source service. So then we can then have a look at the workaround. So let's see how it works here. So I'm actually opening sub GUI. Okay, there is no way around SAPUI when working with SCGW. So, uh, though I personally uh, prefer to work with ADT, um, but here we can't do anything else. So, I can double click here, and, and you see I've this is an S4 HANA 2020 pre configured appliance system. So, a system that you can download yourself and play around in. Uh, in, 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 in CAL. And here we see an OData service, an, a source OData service that, that is based on RDS. So it has two entity types. And uh, if we click on here, we see that, that two, two CDS views, namely SEPM E sales order E, and our items are part of this service. So we want, I want now to create a, a, a second service, actually now a third service that redefines this service. So 
So demo about conf. And um, I'm, oh, I created this already. Then we take uh, the source one. And now I right click here on the data model uh, folder and I choose uh, redefine our data service. Then I would have to search for this service. So when searching it here, also the version is automatically filled. We choose next. And then we, uh, we choose select all. So we, we want to have all entities of uh, that service. So in the past, the, the original idea of redefinition was that, uh, the, that, you, that you're able only to choose a subset of the service, but mostly it is nowadays used to extend actually uh, existing data services that are delivered with SAP S4 HANA. So we choose finish and um, we see now that our entity model contains something we can generate, press generate, and this will generate then the repository objects. And here we have to be careful. Um, okay, I don't, I will not activate this checkbox this means overwrite base extend, uh, extended service. I would do this in an S4 HANA system where the apps are locally deployed and where I want to reuse that service. But here for demo purposes, I'm not using this. And that, that's also the approach you would choose in a hub, in, in, a, in, a, in, in a system where you do not want to overwrite the, actually the service. So, because if I would activate this checkbox, it would mean that my newly created implementation would always be called when the old OData service is called. I want to do this in an S4 HANA system in local deployment, but I do not want to do this in this demo. So I will now generate everything. And I will see now that uh, certain runtime artifacts have been generated. So if I double click here, nicely, ADT opens up with the source code that has been generated. Okay, so far so good. And um, I can also uh, register this service. And that means I can, uh, I'm now able to test this with the SAP Gateway client. And I press execute. And I see that there are uh, two entities. So what I can do now is I can try to add additional um, CDS views to my data model. So I would now uh, choose reference data source. So, and then I will uh, choose that I, so I've created uh, a CDS view for that, uh, that contains currency information. And then I select also the underlying, so the, the dependent text CDS view. That's fine, so I generate now everything. So here I have to then to regenerate it again. So, and I can try to test this service once again. So what would you expect? Normally you would expect that we now would see four entities, but they are not four entities. We just see two entities and that's the problem. So what are we going to do? Okay, we switch back to our presentation. And um, 
The workaround is now to write custom code into MPCX and DPCX. And um, I also published this as a blog post where you can also read what I'm talking about here. And um, there are some steps we have to do. So the first step, we have to create a merged Saddle XML file. So when we have a look in the source code of, an, um, of, the, of the MPC class uh, of, of, a, of an or data service, which has been created via reference data source, we will find uh, an XML file that, contain, that contains the structure of the um, CDS views that are used. And um, let's see, let's see what how it looks like. So we would we can have a look here at the model provider class. And if we search here, control F and search for XML. No, oh, I don't find it. Okay, what happened? Uh, let's see what, what happened. So let's have a look in the source service first. Okay, and then I will have a later look why it isn't showing up and I will make it a little bit larger. And what you find here is this method uh, EF saddle gateway model exposure, get model exposure with a timestamp and the information about these two entities that we found. So I would have now to check why, why this isn't part of this year because I actually added something in here, but this is again, I have not prayed to the demo gods. It's my fault. Um, let's see what whether a uh, regeneration will help here somehow. And otherwise, we will switch to some. Not sure what is now not working here. Okay, let's let's have a look at the at the second example that I created beforehand. So here you see this uh, this code here that that contains the currency text and the. Um, uh, uh, so, so the information about the two CDS views. And what we would now have to do is we would have to merge these two uh, CDS, uh, these two XML files. So this one and this one. And, but this is quite a cumbersome task, right? Um, we'll do this later. Let's have a look uh, what, what, we, what else we have to do. Um, when we have a look at the data provider class, we will find that the same XML file resides also in the data provider class. So there is a method efsable dpc util get dpc, and this um, also contains uh, the uh, the same XML file, by the way. So just for historical reasons, and um, here we also have to put in the merged uh, the merged XML file. What else do we have to do? Next step is that we need um, entity specific methods. Normally, in an SCGW project uh, and also in an um, in a um, 
in an SEGW project that has originally been generated, created via reference data source, you will find entity specific methods. And these entity specific methods contain code that then calls some other generic methods of the Saddle framework. So that's these methods are missing. Here in our case, that would mean uh, we we would we would need just for read access. We would need uh, four methods to get entity method and to get entity set methods. Now uh, we are not, not not yet ready, so we would also uh, have to redefine the generic get entity and get entity set methods. So when looking into the code of an um, of a data provider class in uh, that has been generated by SCGW, you will find a generic method called IWBEP MGW Apple SRV runtime get entity set. And what does this method do? Um, it, it contains a case statement where it's checked which entity uh, set was called. And then based on the entity set, um, uh, the entity set specific method will be called. And after, afterwards, the data is returned to the framework. And here, what we would have to do in our, in the data provider extension class of our redefined project, we would have to add code that will call our implementation of the newly created methods and um, when other entities are called, uh, yeah, fall back to the uh, superclass and then call uh, the, uh, um, the implementation of the superclass. So let's have a look um, how this looks like normally. So if we look at the source service, the um, The source data provider class. We will find this code here for the existing method. So, for this, uh, th their entity specific methods have been generated for for the sales order and so on. Um, but if we look in the um, data provider class of the um, of the redefined project that has been extended via RDS, we see nothing. And this is what we have to do. So we have to go here into the DPCX, and this is where what I have done before. And um, we have to add code here. So we have to redefine the generic methods for get entity and get entity set calls. We also have to redefine this get DPC class, which loads the saddle model. Here we have to enter the merged uh, XML file. And we um, have to, uh, uh, yeah, we have to add our, call our entity specific methods. And we have to, um, Add entity specific methods in addition. So, as you can see, these are 166 uh, lines of code. Uh, and it's quite cumbersome to, yeah, to type this because partly it's very generic code, right? Um, because it's something that, that usually would belong more to the framework side. Um, and there is, let's say, room to do typos. So when analyzing this, I, I did the following. I wrote a report that does the, that is uh, creating this. So if we press F8 here, um, I created a report that lets you select the, the, name of the SCGW pro source project. 
and it will let you select the reference data, so the, the CDS, um, uh, um, sorry, the SEGW project for redefined service. And if you press execute, it will download uh, the source code for these methods into the, in a text file. So we'll see, we see that here and the code, this is the code you have to enter in your class. So this is the model provider class implementation. Oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. That was the one from a real, I will show this later from a real S for HANA or data service, which is quite huge. So this is just the small one. So I just copy this. Then I go to this redefinition underscore two. MPC ixt. And generate this. So that works fine. And um, then we have to go to the data provider class. So here that I'm going to delete also. So I, I did this before and as you have seen, something went wrong with the number four class. I don't know why. Probably a very simple error, but um, it's always the problem with live demos. So I'm now taking here the generated code for my data provider class. Okay, then you will see here some errors. So right now, um, the, uh, we need here in the code, the types, which are defined in the model provider class of our newly added entities. So I have not yet been able to uh, identify them. So uh, I just managed it, it this morning, but I, there was not enough time to add this to that report. So we select here these from the currency type, currency entity. Then the next, uh, the next is the, the I currency text text get entity set method. This is based on a TT type, currency text type. That's for the currency, the get entity type. Um, so the ZI, right? So ZI currency. And last not least, uh, for the get entity set, we also need uh, the type. Now I'm able to generate this. And if I go back to my second project and call the gateway client, I see that additional entities are there. If I press entity set, I see that there are four of them now. So exactly what I wanted to achieve. So what this report does, as I said, it is uh, providing you code that you can fill into your model provider extension class and data provider extension class um, so that you are able um, to extend the redefined uh, RDS based or data service again via RDS. Just because we are providing this information in the um, here in this in the source code, 
about the whole uh, structure of our combined our data service then. And since everything is based on Sadl, we are able to do that. Okay. Um, let's see what, uh, I guess I'm way too fast, probably, I hope. Um, okay, so that, that's the tool support that I've been talking uh, to about. So this is the report. It's I put it on GitHub. Um, I hopefully have not used too much Hungarian notation in it. So I, I was trying to remove it, but I partly copied and pasted code from our framework where, where it's mandatory to use Hungarian notation. Okay, so you I can download the code and use it and have this generated code in a in a text file. So it's still the responsibility of the developer to add this code. So I've refrained from let's say overwriting classes because I could potentially do damage here. So this works now fine for the smaller data services, but if we are uh, tackling large or data services, there are several known issues. So what are these? Um, one, one is if you redefine very large data services, you can run into timeout problems. And that means the um, usually in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in SAP system, you will have 11 minutes for a work process to run, but it can take longer. So maybe a quarter of an hour and even 20 minutes. Um, as a workaround, you can adapt the profile of your SAP system and uh, and change this profile parameter to a let's say larger value. Here, for example, I did this to 120 minutes or so two hours, and this can be done via RZ11, and this can even be done on the fly. So there is no need to reboot the system, but you have to have the authorization. So. That might be a problem with larger customers, as Sören found out. Um, but um, at least you can tell the basis administrators that this is a temporary change that can be done in a development system. I think that shouldn't be a big deal. And uh, it's if this is the new value here. There was in former times the profile parameter was called max DP runtime but uh, there are now three new uh, profile parameters that have replaced this. And this was as of 740. And actually in this S4HANA 2020 system, you won't find the max VP runtime profile parameter anymore. You would have to choose this one. So it has been removed. Um, other problems are that when you um, redefine complex or data services, there are consistency checks uh, that are run when you usually create a new or data service. And um, for whatever reason, these, uh, these uh, um, consistency checks, they are in conflict with existing models. So even if the underlying or data service works fine, SCGW, uh, uh, claims that there are certain problems, for example, here with function import, and there are two nodes that you can import into your system. And as a result, the errors will be converted into warnings so that you can actually generate your data service. Okay, so you are uh, have this second problem. So this is a quite new node. Um, I think it's made public already. Uh, that's what we found out uh, uh, just recently. And if there are additional problems, please let me know. Um, we will work on this and would, uh, let's say, add these as additional exceptions. And as a result now, this uh, large or data service MM Pure Central CTR maintained can be redefined after both nodes have been applied. There's also an additional node for value list annotations. 
if these are not loaded in SEGW, and I will provide all these links into the um, here in the presentation and also in the blog post. Then here again, if you remember that when I generated, when I redefined the OData service, I actually did not use this overwrite-based extended service because I wanted to show this uh, yeah, more explicitly. But in an S4HANA system where our recommendation is now to use this embedded deployment, uh, you should check this because then your extended service will be used by your um, SAP S4HANA app, which runs locally on your uh, S4HANA system. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, we can also have a short look at a larger service. Let's, let's maybe... Um, one moment. <clears throat> so just to show you that it also works for um, larger systems. <clears throat> I've done this here for this um, master bank account service. So and you, as you can see already, when expanding the data model, it's uh, yeah, it shows you that uh, this is a, a more complex service. And this is here the redefinition of that service. Okay, that's. That takes a while. Maybe meanwhile, I will switch to the to the classes that are here involved. So I used my the same report here in um, in order to, um, one moment. So these are the four classes that have been generated by SEGW. <clears throat> and as you can see here, the model provider class, extension class um, um, also contains here uh, two additional CDS views and also the associate. Uh, no, the association is not in there, but um, only here for, uh, for this two text. So this has been combined by the report. And um, additionally, for the DPC X file. In the redefined service, you also see these additional methods. And um, and if we call this service, so here I have to use um, this way. I can check it now with the, um, oh, still my breakpoints in here. You see that I'm, uh, I prepared some breakpoints. So we are now in the model provider extension class. So we are reading this uh, Sardel XML. And this will provide us the list of all the OData, uh, of all the entities here, in addition with these two entities that I have added to this large OData service. So, and if I execute this, Again, my 
code is hit. So first of all, uh, this model exposure, and now we are in the DPCX class. Oh, sorry about that. And here we are in that case statement. So we see our extension class is called and also the saddle file on the DPCX class is used. And we have the data in here. Okay, I think that's quite a, a punkt landung, I guess, or post. Um, yes, uh, yes, perfect. Punkt landung, richtig. Yeah. So, what, what I maybe I. I uh, look back here in this. Um, so I, I will continue to work on this a little bit because um, there's one open point that's with these so-called flex classes. So in these um, in this um, larger or data services, sometimes so-called flex classes are used for key user extensibility, and this is what I mentioned here. Um, that I would like to add there too that you that you could use uh, this for services that, that make use of key user tools. Yeah, that would be then the end. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, so I, now I have to buy a time machine because uh, I have to time travel to my former uh, self about this session and tell me about this session because it, uh, that would uh, have uh, saved me a lot of time uh, last year. But. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Andre, for this uh, great lecture uh, and, and the insights. I think that's uh, a lot of information for us and very, very helpful for us for our daily work, for our daily business.